So up until now, all the computations that we've done with respect to a present value and future value have involved situations where we only uh, had a single cash flow, right? So when we were calculating future value, we were just calculating the future value of just one amount t years out into the future. And similarly, when we were calculating present value, we were only dealing with one amount out into the future and we were bringing it uh, back to the present. Uh, what we want to do now is uh, extend that framework to account for situations where we are dealing with multiple uh, cash flows. It's a very simple extension of the same principle. Uh, what we're going to do is first consider a situation where we are calculating the future value of multiple cash flows and then we're going to uh, take a look at an example in which we're doing present value. Uh, so take a look at this example. Let's suppose that your bank pays an annual interest rate of 5%. Uh, how much will you have in the bank three years from today if you save $1,000 today, $1,200 one year from now or one year from today, and then $1,500 two years later or two years from today? And so if you were to draw a, a timeline to represent these cash flows, which I strongly recommend that you do because it helps you see everything um, in, in, a, in sort of a nice convenient manner then basically what you're saying here is that you are going to be investing a thousand dollars in the bank today and then another uh, twelve hundred dollars one year later and then another uh, fifteen hundred dollars two years later and the question that you're asking is like if you do this how much would you have in your bank uh, by the end of three years. Uh, this is um, uh, this uh, example is somewhat representative of uh, you know a situation where you are uh, saving up uh, to have a certain amount by the end of a certain time period. Like if you're if you're looking to have like a certain amount, or if you were interested in finding out like how much will I have like five years, ten years out into the future if I make these sort of yearly deposits in the bank. Well, this is the framework that you can use to. Um, analyze that sort of a situation and so the key here is to realize is that the sooner you make a deposit that deposit earns interest for a longer period of time right so the future value of the one thousand dollars is one thousand uh, times because it's going to earn interest one year and then the second year and then the third year this the, by the end of year three this thousand dollars would have become 1.05 raised to the power three which uh, solves out to 1157.625 uh, but if you then by the end of year one if you deposit twelve hundred dollars this twelve hundred dollars doesn't earn interest as much it only earns interest and then interest upon interest for two years so the future value of that would be 1200 uh, into 1.05 but now you just raised this raise this to the power of 2 which would uh, solve out to 1323 and uh, finally this last deposit of $1500 uh, this only earns interest for one year and so the future value of that would be just 1500 into 1 1.05 which would solve out to 1575 and so now if your objective was to find out how much would you have by the end of year three well your thousand dollars by the end of year three would have uh, converted to this amount your 1200 would have become this amount and your 1500 would have become this amount so the total that you would have by the end of year three would be roughly four thousand uh, fifty five point six two five which is basically the sum of all these three numbers uh, so again as you can see this is a very simple extension of the future value framework uh, that we have learned in the past all that th this really requires is you to calculate the future value of these amounts individually and then add them up uh, the present value computation is very similar so let me show you an example so uh, here let's suppose you have a financial advisor 
and she's selling you this investment or a product from which you can expect to earn $300 one year from now, $500 two years from now, and uh, $700 three years from now. Uh, if your opportunity cost, or if the relevant discount rate is 7%, the question is how much is this cash flow stream worth to you today? How much is this worth to you today? And so again, I urge you to try and represent these cash flows using a timeline because again it helps you um, sort of see all the different cash flows and then you know how to um, how to uh, discount them properly so here you are today here you are here's time period one so end of one year second year uh, third year and so what we know is that we are going to get from this investment uh, $300 one year from today right so this is $300 one year from today uh, we will get $500 two years from today and then we will get $700 three years from today so if we ask ourselves you know how much is this cash flow stream worth to us today well, that simply involves us discounting these cash flows one by one uh, back to the present. And so this 300 would get discounted just one year back, whereas this 500 would get discounted two years back, whereas this 700 would get discounted uh, three years back, because while we're waiting for this 700, we're losing out on this 7% opportunity cost for one year, two years, three years. And so the way we would proceed with this is that we would first calculate the uh, present value of this 300. So the present value of this 300, this 300 is only going to get divided by uh, 1.07 once. Uh, uh, and so if you do this uh, math, this would solve out to 280.37. And then if, if we now ask ourselves, uh, how much is this $500 worth to us today? Well, this will get discounted two years. And so the present uh, value of this 500 would be 500 divided by 1.07 squared which uh, solves out to 436 436.72 and finally uh, this last 700 uh, this will get discounted back three years so the present value of that or how much that is worth to us today would be 700 divided by 1.07 raised to the power 3 which solves out to 571.41. And so if somebody now asks us, uh, what is the present value or how much is this cash flow stream worth to you today? You'd say, well, this 300 is only worth 280.37 to me today. This 500 is only worth 436.72. And this 700 is only worth 571. So Today, in present value terms, this cash flow, this entire cash flow stream is worth the sum of these three numbers, which is approximately 1,288.50. Now, um, let's suppose that uh, when our advisor is uh, selling us this uh, investment, uh, he's he she is asking for you know some amount of money up front so she's selling it to us and so let's suppose that she's selling this to us for a thousand dollars she's saying look would you pay one thousand dollars today uh in order to have the right to receive uh three hundred dollars one year from now five hundred dollars two years from now seven hundred dollars three years from now and so would you do it uh, the answer is yes, because if we were to calculate the net uh, present value, then we're saying, look, we're essentially going to be paying $1,000 today, $1,000 today. And in today's terms and in present value terms, really what we would be receiving uh, is 1288.50. So this basically is 
uh, 288.50. So even after netting out the initial investment that we're making, we're still making 288.50. So, so essentially the question is, if somebody came up to you today and said, would you like $288.50 today? Just like that? The answer is yeah, absolutely yes. And so this, uh, you would definitely go ahead and uh, invest in this. And so uh, generally, uh, when you have multiple cash flows occurring at different points in time, so let's see one represent the cash flow that you're getting one year from now, and C2 represent cash flow you're receiving two years from now, so on and so forth, so that CT is representing the cash flow that you're getting T years from now, the present value of all of these cash flows can be represented as the sum of these ter terms right here. Uh, C1 cash flow one year from now will only get discounted back one year, whereas uh, whereas cash flow that you're getting two years from now will get discounted back two years, so on and so forth, and you sum it up. And the net present value is capturing the idea is that sometimes when you are um, making an investment to get the rights to you know cash flow one year from now two years from now sometimes you have to spend some money up front like in our our, ex uh, our example this was one thousand dollars and so this negative sign is basically here to represent that typically today you have to make uh, an upfront investment you have to spend money so money is going out and these uh, you don't have any negatives here in fact all of these are positives denoting that you are uh, this investment is going to give the right to some inflows into the future and so net present value uh, then is expressed as the um, as the sum of all of these terms uh, and so if this number comes out to be greater than zero, then uh, basically that indicates that you should go ahead and make the investment.